You never know. But yeah, I cut back on my eating, and I'm about three quarters done with drinking beer, you know. I got down that far in the beer drinking, but once in a while I got to have a couple. Doctor says, whatever the heck you're doing, I told him I'm eating all kinds of meats and potatoes and everything. Well, I said, it's working for you, so just keep doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever, uh, whatever. Everybody's different, you know. And everybody uh, responds differently to different foods, so you got to find what works for you and stick with it. Yep. I used to tell everybody all the time for years, everybody's metabolism is different, so yeah, whatever happens, happens. But yeah, I do feel better. Even, uh, you know, you got your aches and pains when you, when you get up into your 70s, and uh, yeah, the golden years, wonderful. Yeah, Roger in the golden years. Yeah, I'm in my 50s, and I, I'm already feeling aches and pains. So, yeah, I'm trying to. I've been eating healthy here for a couple years now. You know, it's not real strict. You know, we we'll uh, I'll eat things that uh, I regret for a day or two after. But you know, you gotta you gotta go for it sometimes. Pay the price and get back on track. I guess. Oh uh, yeah, I heard you talking there. You got a new rig, huh? Yeah, wasn't the other one blue? You, you got a blue one again, the truck or what? No, the other one was uh, goldish brown. That's the one uh, you, you saw when you came out and met me. And uh, they put us in a new one. And this one's kind of a silver silver color. It's the same same brand. It's just uh, it's a new model and it's completely different. Oh, I was just show you how much attention I was paying. I thought it was blue. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah, you got to get everything squared away again on the new pick em up Yeah, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, you got to move everything over. It's like a small apartment. You know, and we've been in the same model of truck. You know, we've been in several of uh, the Freightliner Cascadias, and they've all been pretty much the same truck. You know, you, from one year to the next, the layout on the inside is the same. So, you know, you move things over from one to the other, and, and it, you know, it goes right in where it came out of the other one. It goes into the new one. Yeah, this one was completely different. I mean, totally different. So, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest i mean i had to figure out all kinds of different places and ways to get things installed and mounted and and uh finally finally kind of finished it up yeah well yeah for the most part anyway well that's good it's good that the boss lets you do that stuff yeah that that's one thing really good about this company i mean we got it we got it set up we we really got it good and we appreciate you know um being able to have our stuff in here and, and uh, make it a home. Yeah, well, you must be a hell of a worker. That's why they do that stuff for you. You know, you got to keep your uh, employees happy. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, you got to, you know, you, you got to work hard, and uh, and sometimes they, you get a, a little bone thrown in your way, you know, and it's it's definitely a, a nice thing. Uh, Joe, that's something I could never do, man. I do a lot of traveling. I don't even like to drive to Santa Barbara from here. Uh, we used to go to Las Vegas and Laughlin all the time, but we don't do that anymore. Uh, man, we haven't been to Las Vegas in maybe five or six years. We went every year. We just celebrated our 50-year anniversary on July 3rd, just past July 3rd. And we were going to go, and we decided not to. We only flew out of here one time. First time either one of us has ever been in a plane. Uh, so, uh, I felt like I was in a coffin with wings, so that's not going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, flying's not your thing, don't do it. Um, congratulations, man. You've been married as long as I've been alive, in 1968. That's, uh, the year I was born. You guys got married, what, in your 20s? Yeah, I graduated in 68, and right after that, got married about three months later. Uh, 10 four. Well, that's cool. 68's a great year. Both my wife and myself were born in 68. So, yeah, it's got to be a good year. They had great cars that year, too, and it's a year you guys got married, so it must be something. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we were both born in 49, me and my wife. Uh, my birthday is August 3rd. It just passed, and my wife's is coming up September 16th, which is Mexican Independence Day. She's going to be 70, and we've been married 50 years. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I love it.
I love her to death. Yeah, Tim Forum. Well, that's great, man. That's it's definitely rare, especially these days. And uh, I'm I'm glad to hear it. It's something uh, I think there needs to be more of. You know, people need to hear about that kind of thing. You know, because it's it's almost becoming a, a a relic of the past. You know, people just don't value marriage the way they used to. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I have friends that got married around the same time of us as we did, and. Most of them been married at least three times and a few four times already. <laughs> and they're having the same problem they had with their first wife they left. But hey, everybody has problems. If anybody out there tells you they don't have any problems in their marriage, they're full of it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's about compromise. You know, it's like everything in life, especially a relationship. You know, uh, my wife and I, we, we've we been really fortunate. We were enough different to, that it, it stays interesting, but we're enough um, alike that we can get along in this little six foot by eight foot box. You know, we, we're going to, we're going to be, it's going to be um, nine years this November, or no, eight years this November that we've been living in this truck for, you know, full time. So... It definitely takes, uh, you know, and I got to be honest, it's not, it's not work getting along with her. You know, we, we have our minor differences once in a while, but 99.9% .9 of the time we get along really well, and that's, that's a huge blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially being in a small uh, area like that. That's even better. Holy mackerel, you had to double your, your time there just for that, being in a small space and getting along. And like I said, everybody has conflicts. You just got to work it out. That's what I told my friends years ago, and now they're still complaining about the same stuff three or four wives later. You just got to work on it. Yeah, Tim Hoare, well, they're, uh, they're having the same problem with different people. It might mean that uh, the other people may not be the problem, Tim Hoare. Yeah, you know what? I tell my friends that, my guy friends. I say, hey, what's the common den denominator in this whole mess? And that would be them. That's right. Hey, Turtle, does this radio still sound clear on that end? I, I put a little more compression in there just for uh, kicks. I don't know if it's getting a little on the dirty side or does it still sound clean? That sounds perfect to me, Bobby. You always sound good. I've never heard you sound bad. Never. Yeah, Tim Porn. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just messing with it. But, um, yeah, you know, marriage is... Uh, it's a good thing, you know, I mean, you definitely have to, you, you know, you can't, you can't, it's, you know, it's not all about number one, you know, and, and you're the guy to, to be, be talking about that for sure, 50 years under your belt, um, and you know what it takes, but uh, I think people just kind of jump into things without thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. And it's a bigger mess nowadays than ever. I feel sorry for the rest of the gangs coming up. But oh, that's just the way it is. That's life. Yeah, 10 4. Somebody's singing out there. I think they better keep their day job. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you heard that. I don't know if it's Skip or somebody local, and uh, they're just busting loose and uh, letting it all ride. Too sure. I could barely hear him, which was good for my ears. Yeah, I could barely hear him too in this little Mud Duck radio or uh, Mud Duck mobile. You know, his little little antennas. What? Come on! I don't know. You know that person that was interfering with you and Motor Duck a while ago, and they were doing it yesterday. You know, they were pretty much, they must have been mobile, I think. And I think they were yesterday, too. But Tripp said that he thought today they were over by him. Because I uh, was having a hard time hearing both you and Motor Duck. And, uh, and then uh, he got further away, and you guys were just stomping him. Yeah, you know, I hate when people do that. That's just nonsense. You know, I think it's sad that uh, they got picked on as children and, and bullied and they grew up and uh, turned into asswads about it, but, you know, what can you do? Well, one 
one thing you could do if you could find them, you could kick their butt. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> Yeah, ten four. Yeah, boy, what would that accomplish? You know, but yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Well, not much, but it makes me feel better sometimes. But now, nah, not really. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Um, but they're out there. You know, I, I go around to a lot of different areas and. And, uh, you know, you get to know the locals and uh, all the, the spots that we cruise through and cruise around. For the most part, everybody's really cool, and uh, I always look forward to getting out there and and uh, talking to people and whatnot. But i got to tell you, man, there, there's, uh, there's a few areas with just one rotten apple in the bunch that likes to get in there and, and screw it all up. How come you can't hear? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear you there. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about radios. All I know is... Is I turned it on and uh, I could hear people. I just hooked up a, a Palomar 600 with a 70 amp uh, power supply. I don't even know why the hell I did that. I was doing okay before. Sometimes people had trouble hearing me or I couldn't hear them. And, but yeah, oh well. I just try to keep it basic. The less hook up, the less hookups you have, the less problems. Yeah, keeping it simple. Um, didn't you have a 667? I had one. I got, you know, I ordered one and got it, and I go, I don't need this damn thing. <laughs> what the hell do I need this for? So I sent it back. And then I picked up this 600 for really, really, really cheap. They almost gave it to me. Uh, I didn't even know if it worked, and I just hooked it up today, or yesterday. Okay. And uh, you said it was feeding back with the power mic? Yeah, it's feeding back. I think I'm just too close to the speaker there, or the equipment or whatever. Because when I turned around away from the equipment, then it stopped. And I just turned it on a while ago. It's on medium right now. And, uh, yeah, it's working good. Okay, now are you using a regular mic or still using uh, No, I'm on a... Uh I, I, I'm on a Galaxy uh, base station, 2547, and I got the stuck mic. I don't want to have to turn around, so... And Country Bear said it, this one was louder than the power mic. Well, yeah, and that, that, that mic that you're talking to right now sounds perfect. I mean, it sounds excellent. Um, what power mic were you trying? Uh, it's a, uh, let me see here, it's a super, Superstar, where the hell, is it? I got so many mics sitting around here, it's a Echo mic, it's a Superstar DM452. Okay, no, I'm not familiar with it, um, no, I mean, uh, if, uh, if you got plenty of audio, you, you wouldn't really need one. If it's not working with your amplifier, I think you, I think you got it going now. Well, I hope so. Anyway, uh, whatever happens, happen. If it blows up or whatever the heck, I just go back to flat foot, and uh, that's the way it'll be. Yeah, ten four. Well, I was talking to you uh, barefoot a second ago when uh, when I was talking to you the first time. You sounded excellent, but uh, can you can you uh, give me back to back so I can hear the difference uh, with the amplifier on and barefoot? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, hold on a second. All right, there you go. I'm barefoot. No power mic, stock mic on this bass radio. One, two, three, four, five. I just turned it back on. One, two, three, four, five. Oh wow, yeah, that that is actually a big difference um, from where I'm at. That 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 amplifier sounds really good too. I mean, it, you can't hear it uh, changing your audio at all. I mean, it still sounds linear and clean, and it's just a lot louder. So, yeah, I'd leave it where it's at. Yeah, I won't even put it on high. This is medium. Bear said it sounded good on low. And then medium, I, I think it was a little bit better, and he said, just leave it there, so that's what I'm going to do. Country Bear knows what he's talking about. Yeah, Tim Ford. Yeah, I, I think I'll agree with him. That, that sounds perfect right there. You know, cranking it up may give you a few more watts, but it really isn't going to make any difference to us out here, you know, just straining the equipment, and, and it might not sound as good. It sounds perfect where it's at. Thank 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I don't know why the hell. Like I said, I really don't want no. <laughs> why I got this stuff? But anyway, I guess it was because there was a lot of skipping. I always wanted something, you know, maybe to help a little bit. But all the damn skip's gone now, which really doesn't matter. Oh well. I was about ready to give this stuff away just about a month ago. The power supply and the kicker. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people doing that, and, and then they regret it and get back into it a couple years later. And yeah, I've, I've heard of actually uh, people doing that several times. Um, but, man, you know, I mean, Skip Skip will definitely be back. You know, conditions uh, should continue to improve for the next year or two, and then uh, hopefully they'll be really good. So uh, the sun's supposed to be in a good cycle here pretty pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, it'll come in handy. Uh, Roger. Yeah, I got a uh, Mako 5.8, you know, uh, up in the air, probably the, to the tip of it's probably about 50 or 55 feet. Okay, yeah, that's that's perfect, man. You got that all set up. Yeah, yeah, you, you'll be talking. Yeah, I mean, even barefoot with that antenna, I mean, I'm sure you could shoot skip... Uh, even just barefoot, but you get that little extra power going, that makes a big difference. Yeah, and another thing, I don't have the radials on it, and my SWRs are still good. I had the radials on it when I first bought it a while back here, and I had, uh, one day I came out and it was like five crows sitting on one of the... <laughs> one of the radials and it bent it all the way down to the base of the antenna you know so i took it off and then country bear and grandpa came over and uh, worked on it and cut it a little bit you know where it bent close to the to the uh, middle of uh, where it's connected there on the inside and uh, i just didn't put it back up and uh, my swrs are still good they were the same with or without them Huh, okay. Well, it's better than, uh, it's better without them then. Uh, you don't have to worry about those heavy-ass crows sitting on it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And that's that's what they're there for, you know, to help get a better match, you know. So, if it's matched up, you obviously don't need them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I fear. If it's working, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, even though it broke and I did fix it and I just never put them back on. I've been thinking about it, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do from one day to the next. I'm taking it a day at a time here at my age, and uh, yeah. Yeah, 10 four. No, I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't bother with it. I mean, like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, you just get up there and start doing something and you might break it. And then your SWRs are through the roof and you got a whole can of worms. Yeah, I would, I, man, I'll tell you, you get a good match, you got to go with it. Yep, that's what I think. So we'll see what happens here. I don't know. I did, you know what? I ordered a couple of different beams. I don't even remember which ones, you know. Shit, I can't remember the kind. I ordered two of them, I don't know, about a year ago or so. And, you know, I don't have a whole lot of room over here, but uh, I put them up, and I really didn't like them, and it looked, looked terrible up in the air over here at my place. I just had them on a 50-foot push-up, and I don't know. I just didn't like it, you know, so I just sent them both back. I didn't order them at the same time, but I said, oh, well. I'll just keep, I'll just order me a 5.8 Mako, and I got that, and that's what I've been using ever since. I used to have a Starduster, and that sucker worked awesome. Okay, what happened to the Starduster? Well, uh, something happened to it there, and I got rid of it, but I recently, not too long back here, got a hold of another one. And, I, man, I had such good luck talking Skip, you know, to Hawaii. That was barefoot, too, man. And I used to talk to Hawaii and the Bahamas and and Australia, and, you know, in the evening and stuff, and back east, and all of a sudden something happened. I don't know what the hell it was, but it didn't work right. But like I said, I got another one, and I really had good luck with it, with the old one. So I've been thinking, I was telling Country Bear, I might switch this out pretty quick here, take that 5.8 down and see what happens. I know it's not as good an antenna, you know, for the waves or whatever, but anyway, 
I liked it, and it worked. So, yeah. Yeah, 10 4. Yeah, you know, I mean, I. I read a lot, you know, people talking about one antenna over another, and you know, and as you know, there's a, a gajillion different types of antennas for every band and, and everything else, and people swear by one and and uh, despise another and everything else. I, I honestly, I, I think... I, I think there, there, there is some difference, of course. You know, a better built antenna, a better engineered antenna is going to have more gain and work a little bit better. But I think it really just comes down to Mother Nature for the most part. Yeah, that's probably a big part of it, no doubt about it. You know, something that works for one person may work better, doesn't work good, and works better for another person. But yeah, I had such good luck with that Starduster. For years, I had that sucker up. I had it on top of a two-story apartment building, and it was on two of those Radio Shack 10-foot poles, you know, that I put together and put that on the top of it, man. Shit, I talked everywhere. Yeah, Tim Ford, well, that, a few years ago, man, you got to remember, too, I mean, we had some serious conditions, too. I mean, that, uh, I had a, I had a little radio, that was about five years ago, I had a small radio in, in my truck at the time, no, no amplifier, nothing, and I was talking to people all over the place, and I, I thought that was just freaking amazing. And then I started upgrading and getting amplifiers and starting to get into nicer radios and everything, and conditions went away. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, but that started us one time, honest to God. I had a couple of witnesses out here. I talked to a guy in China. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I, I don't doubt it. I, I talked to, uh, I had, I've got a striker 955, and uh, I was talking to a guy, I was talking to Australia a lot several years ago, and uh, talking to people in the Bahamas and everything else. And, you know, that, that radio is only, it was, I think it was only putting out like 75 watts or something like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Those are good radios. I was about a while back here about getting one. I forget which model it was, but anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to keep what I got until it like, breaks down or whatever, then I won't worry about it no more. Yeah, 10-4. That's fun to experiment, though. You know, if you got the time and, and the... Uh and the uh, motivation, you know, never hurts anything. But you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to justify, you know, taking something that works really well and uh, kind of pushing it aside and, and changing it to something else. But you know, I mean, uh, something as simple as an antenna, you know, what you got works. And if you try something else and it doesn't, gee, I guess you can just always throw that one back up. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, I might set up another one. I don't know. Maybe it's too close. I'm back here in a indoor barbecue room. I was going to put one in the house so I don't have to uh, come out here all the time, especially in the wintertime when it's raining and stuff. So I don't even know. I might put the Starduster in front uh, in the house, you know, in one of the bedrooms. But I don't know if, they, if they'll interfere with each other or whatever. I, uh, you know, not that I'll use them at the same time, but anyway... Yeah, I'm not really sure. Probably, I, I wouldn't imagine that it wouldn't make any difference, you know? You're only using one at a time. 